Yo YouTube, what is good? My name is Scott Adamson. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering one of the most common questions I get about my van build. And those questions are everything to do with using 80-20 to frame the cabinets in your Sprinter van. So let's roll that intro and we'll get started. So if you've been following along with the build at all, you'll know that I'm using 80-20 to frame my cabinets in this van instead of using kind of the more traditional wood framing that's popular in a lot of DIY van conversions and a lot of the professional van upfitters. And you'll also know that it's been a very steep learning curve for me in working with the 80-20. There's just so much to learn. Yeah, I know obviously I don't need to memorize this whole book, but whenever you're working with a new product, you just really like to know all of the different possibilities. Yeah, basically all the different possibilities and all the different profiles and options that you have. So when you do decide on how you want to do it, you're making a well-informed decision. And when you're learning about the product and this is the book that they send you, it's a bit overwhelming to say the least. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my upper cabinets I built in the van. I'm going to go over kind of the profiles I use, the construction methods I used to attach the 8020 together and how I mounted to the actual vehicle. I'm starting with the upper cabinets because kind of the only thing I'm actually almost finished so I can show you that. So what profiles did I use for the upper cabinet? On my upper cabinet I used the 40 series. Again I'm using the metric extruded aluminum so that's 40 millimeters wide. I believe in the states that would be considered the inch and a half profile. So it's all 40 series but I'm using on the corners I'm using sort of the two closed faces. I've got a center post that is the three faces open, one face closed. And then on the uh, bottom size, I'm using what's called like a 45 piece, which is just kind of like a nice trim detail piece. I actually got this idea from a buddy of mine that built a very similar van. And I just really like the way it kind of added a little bit of detail as opposed to using kind of the just square at the bottom. The construction of these upper cabinets is actually super simple. It consists of two six foot square pieces. That's one on the ceiling and then one mounted along the wall. It includes one six foot uh, 45 angle piece. And then it includes just six of the shorter support pieces. So that's kind of your two corners, two corners in, and then your middle support and in. So that's kind of two, four, six. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> Maybe I'll just draw a picture or something. The hardest part about the upper cabinets is fastening the upper rail. The upper rail, because we use rib nuts and we put rib nuts into the ribs of the ceiling panels, we're actually using the top rail to hold up the upper, to hold up the ceiling panels. So we didn't have to drill additional holes, some for the ceiling panels and some for the top rail. I'm using the same holes for both. Made it a little bit harder, but it has way less fasteners in the ceiling and I think it gives it a cleaner look. So maybe let me jump into the van and sort of show you what size rib nuts I used, where I used them, and how that top rail goes into place. All right, I'm going to talk quickly about the pieces that I used for the upper cabinet because the upper cabinet, as you can see, it is pretty much totally done. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I just got to get some end caps here. I actually have the end caps already, just haven't put them up, but that'll tie this up. So basically, the upper cabinet is made out of three long pieces so you can see there's this one piece here it's about six feet this is a 45 piece and then square piece at the top square piece against the wall so there's three of those and then there is six of these so there's one two and another two on the other end and then two in the middle so you can see we've got one two you can see I actually used so this is a closed face, closed face, and then it's slotted in here. Then we've got the center. So you can see we've got the center, which it has open slots on three of the sides. And then on this side, we've got the same as the other end, just opposite. So you can see that's all it is. It's six pieces, super simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the three long pieces. So that's the back one, two, and the top support, three. So it's super simple and super strong. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it all came together. For fastening it, the 
back rail that went into the wall, I actually, we machined out, can't really see it. Here we go, I'll see if I can show you in here. So you can see right there, that is a bolt that we actually drill the hole right through the 8020 and we've got M8s going into riv nuts in the van. So this, that piece here is held on, I think it's four riv nuts. And then the ceiling support piece, you can see we did that with angle brackets. So we got one, two, three. So I'll show you, I'm doing the same thing over here on this side for the wardrobe so you can see. So this is going through the marine vinyl ceiling and then into a rib nut in the ribs of the van. So it was super hard to make sure that we had the holes right in our perforated marine vinyl ceiling panels to make sure that these holes all lined up and everything was in the right space. Using these angle brackets gives you a little bit of latitude because if you're off a little bit, you could actually slot the angle bracket and give you a little bit of leeway. We didn't actually need it, but um, that's why I use the angle brackets because if I needed to, I could have slotted it and it would have let me move this whole piece in or out to get everything lined up properly. But all of these go straight into rib nuts that are in the uh, ribs underneath the ceiling panels and they're super strong it's not going anywhere so i'm super super happy with how this all turned out the main reason getting that top bracket in is so tough is like i said because you're using riv nuts and those riv nuts all need to be perfectly lined up when you go to mount your ceiling so when your ceiling goes in you have to not only drill the holes for the ceiling mounting points you also have to mark them for the top rail marking point so that's why i tried to use them being sort of one in the same so when my ceiling went up i needed to know the exact distance away from the wall i wanted that top rail to sit so that distance for me is, I'm just gonna insert a little number here. I don't know exactly what it is, but once that top rail goes in, you can kind of build everything off of that. The next rail that goes in is the back rail or the bottom rail. And that's the rail that I installed just above sort of the back crew window behind the driver's seat. That rail I used, I didn't use the same angle bracket method that I used on the ceiling for the top rail. What I did here is we actually machined right through the extruded aluminum, and then we went straight into rib nuts in the side of the vehicle. I've seen a few different techniques used here, but at the end of the day, this one seemed to work really well. One thing you're gonna note is that the angle of the vehicle is on a slight curve like this, so it's gonna feel like this piece when it sucks in is pointing down. As long as you have a little bit of slack in it, it is just going to pull itself up tight and lock into that other rail when you put that together. So once you have the upper cabinet rail in and then you have the back cabinet rail in, really the hard part of the framing for the cabinet is all done. Because then all you have to do is you have to cut your shorter support pieces, install those in, and then slide in your bottom 45 piece. And then all of your framing is basically done. For me, when I installed all of the shorter pieces in the van, so all of the side supports, center supports, and the floor supports, that's where I use the automatic fasteners. I just find the automatic fasteners worked really well in this application. They're hidden, so it makes putting the cabinet faces in a lot easier, and they're just easier to deal with when you're working kind of above your head and everything. I'm gonna have a full video dedicated just on the different kinds of fasteners I use with the 8020 but I'll link these ones in the description below. They're called automatic fasteners. They're basically a T-nut, a threaded insert, and then I believe they're M5 bolts, maybe M6s, but they just work really well in this application. So once I had everything installed and in place and I was super happy with it, then it was actually time to take everything all down because I wanted to powder coat it. If you're familiar with 8020, it comes in sort of the aluminum look, the bare aluminum, and another popular color is black. I didn't really want the bare aluminum and I didn't want black, so I had it powder coated and I am super happy with how it turned out. I think it looks awesome. So here's kind of the finished shot of it all put together in the van. I don't think it could have gone together any better. I'm super happy with how all the detail works. I've got the panels now installed and we're now we're starting to work on the door fronts. And yeah, finally starting to feel like the van's coming together. So if you have any questions on building the upper cabinets out of 8020 using extrude aluminum, rib nuts, or any of the construction methods I talked about in this video, don't hesitate to drop me a question in the comments and I will get back 
back to you. If you made it this far and you're enjoying kind of these van build update tip videos, make sure you click that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.